Good morning. Welcome to First St. Paul, this beautiful, it's almost spring weather it feels like, but it's still winter and it's wonderful outside and uh, we welcome all of you, especially the guests. Uh, we do have uh, attendance pads in each of the pews. Please take some time to fill those out and pass them down so we can get to, to know who all is here with us this morning. Um, we're excited that uh, we have a few things for announcements today before we get started. Um, there is going to be a special offering today. Um, during the offering, we're going to have a regular offering place go by first, but then we're going to have a couple of gentlemen walking with the soup pots for our Super Bowl donation that we're going to be giving to Crossroads into our food pantry. So if you would like to put some donations into there, that's going to go to the local food bank areas for the Crossroads and for our food pantry. Uh, we'll be doing that during our regular offering. And then we will have a tipple talk today from the Gideons, and they will be collecting an offering after the service as you exit in a basket in the back for their uh, contributions to their ministry and their mission to, to deliver Bibles. And so those are some of the special offerings today. Um, there is going to be a Super Bowl party. I see a couple of jerseys and some fellow faithful, even those that are not in the Super Bowl. Vikings are still... they they. Yeah, they did great. So, um, but uh, we do have our Super Bowl party this afternoon. Uh, the fellowship time starts at 4:30 over in the Celebration Center. We're having a potluck, so bring your favorite Super Bowl food. So we'll set it up in the kitchen over there, and we'll have the game up on the big screen at 4:30 over in the Celebration Center this afternoon. Come enjoy the game and some fellowship with some beautiful brothers and Christians and Christians, but brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I, there's a lot of announcements, so I'm trying to get through them quick. This week we start up our Lenten series, and Ash Wednesday kicks off our Lent. 40 days of, of reflecting and refocusing on Jesus Christ. So our we Ash Wednesday services, we have two of them. Wednesday at 12.10, which is at noon, over the noon hour. And then we have a 7 o'clock worship service. After the 7 o'clock worship service, we are going to do something special because, you know, Wednesday, February 14th is not just only Ash Wednesday, but it's Valentine's Day. So after the service, we're going to be having a renewal of vows for any, any couples that would like to come forward and renew their vows, especially where we're going to be wearing the cross on our foreheads, recognizing that God is in the midst of all of our relationships, and renewing that with our spouse is wonderful. Uh, the Lenten series is going to be based around the Holy Lands, and there will be a session before each Wednesday night service, starting on the 21st, where Ann Otten will be walking through some, some historical information about where we're going and what we're talking about in our Lenten series. So if you want a little bit more information, she'll be doing that in the fellowship, well, now, Founders Hall, right below us here, before the service on Wednesday nights from 6 o'clock to about 6.45. The... Um, if gathering is coming up on February 23rd and February 24th, you have an insert in your bulletin. If you'd like to register for that, that's the women's retreat um, for any women, all ages. Uh, if you would like, please register for that, and we will have that over in our celebration center on February 23rd and 24th. We will begin new member classes on March 3rd, so anyone ex uh, wanting to join our church, we have our new member classes starting on March 3rd. And then we have one more special announcement. We have a member of our church that... Um, is in a health condition but has to move and cannot move all of the furniture out of the home next Saturday on February 17th. If you are willing and able to help load the U-Haul with some of the furniture, um, please contact the office and let us know, and we'll tell you the time and the location. But we do have a member of our church that's needing some assistance in getting things loaded into their U-Haul, so please let us know if you can help out with that. With those announcements, I will invite Jerry Jamison forward. He's for, here with us today from the Gideons, and he has a special uh, temple talk for us. So, Jerry. Yep. And as they open their Bibles, for devotions that night, they realized they had a common bond and that they were both Christians. As traveling salesmen, they'd sometimes find themselves on the road for days or weeks on end, where they would not enjoy the pleasure of the gentle embrace of their dear wife or the sound of little feet on the floor who would come running to greet them when they came home at night. 
or the friendly visit of a dear friend who would just stop by to encourage them, but rather they would experience the temptations that aloneness brings, such as sexual immorality, alcohol abuse, gambling. Recognizing the struggles of the traveling man, they asked themselves, how can we help Christian business and professional men maintain a strong testimony for Christ? So they decided to start an organization, the Gideons International, whose primary focus was on who a man was before God and the strength and power of his testimony for Christ. That just as a three-stranded cord is not easily broken, they needed to be associating together with other Christian business and professional men, striving together for the good news of the gospel, helping and encouraging each other to run from st sin and stay obedient to their King Jesus in all areas of their life, especially in their personal testimony and personal work and to help each other be obedient to the king's command to go and make disciples of all nations. They started this evidence of their obedience by placing Bibles, God's holy word, or portions thereof, in hotels and later in many other areas, such as in hospitals, schools, institutions. In Romans 10, 17, we read, So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And as the word of God went forth, God used it to draw people to himself. The early founders of the Gideons also recognized that their wives had their own set of temptations and spiritual challenges, as they too were just as alone as their husbands. They were encouraged and assisted in organizing a ladies' ministry where the ladies could strive together against sin and for the gospel. The ladies were also assisted in organizing their own scripture, areas of scripture distribution. And for both Gideons and auxiliaries, they would soon learn that a very important fruit of scripture distribution is that distributions cause them to get together so that they could spend time with each other, helping each other strive for the gospel. When Gideon shared with his pastor the vision that God was giving them, the pastor became excited and said he and his congregation would like to assist them by helping to pay for the scriptures that they would be distributing. Today, the Gideons are organized in 199 countries around the world, and God is blessing our work by using his word to draw many to himself. Pablo Lopez Riaz is from the Pueblo district of Mexico. He told me how one day he received a call from a man whose first question was, is there more? Pablo asked what he was talking about. The caller explained how one month earlier he had received a bunch of rolled up newspapers and as he was unrolling them, a little book fell out that said that it had been placed by the Gideons. And inside, he had found Pueblo's phone number. He had read the little book all the way through and found it very interesting. But he said it sounded like there was more. Pablo explained that he had received a copy of the New Testament, but there was also an Old Testament. The caller asked, please send me the whole Bible. Pablo went on to report that two months later, he received another call from the same man who told him that he had been reading from that little testament and sharing what he was reading with two of his friends at work, and that all three had turned to Jesus and were teaching what they were learning to their families. A fourth man had told them where they could find a church, and all three families had been in church the last two Sundays. This morning, I would like to thank you for helping us to strive together for the gospel. And I'd like to ask you to help in four different ways. Number one, and most importantly, please pray. Secondly, if you qualify spiritually and occupationally, I would encourage you to join. Join us in helping each other to stay faithful to the Lord and in helping us take God's word to the people of our world. Third, you may use a Gideon Card Bible program to purchase Bibles in memory or in honor of loved ones. And at the close of the service, there'll be an offering basket at the back of the sanctuary where you may, as God guides you, give to purchase scriptures that will be placed around the world at an average cost of $1.85 per scripture. Thank you for your obedience and love to our Savior and King, Jesus. Thank you, Jerry. And there is an insert in your bulletin for more information and contact information about the Gideons if you are more would like to be in contact with them and find out some more information about them. So thank you. Well, we may need that. So thank you, Jerry. That's okay. 
Let's continue with the order of our uh, worship service and please stand. The peace of Christ be with you always. And share that peace with you even if you're not in the same jersey. It's so fun to have some friendly competition in the same room, right? (laughs) Let us continue with the order of our worship service as printed in our bulletin with a confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and our refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, you are God's beloved. Amen. Let us remain standing and join in our opening hymn number 807, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
I invite you to join with me in the prayer of the day. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop in our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illuminate the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading uh, is taken from 2 Kings 2, verses 1 through 12. It is found on page 290 if you want to follow along uh, in the Bibles before you. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, and the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The psalm, which we will read responsively, is Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6, and it can be found on the insert in your bulletin. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty. Our God comes and does not keep silent. He calls to the heavens above. Gather to me, my faithful ones. The heavens declare his righteousness. The second reading, which is found on 939 in the Bibles before you, is taken from 2 Corinthians uh, 4, verses 3 through 6. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing clearly the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we did not pro proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Light will shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Here end the first and second reading. Please rise for the gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. We're reading from Mark 9, verses 2 through 9 on pages 820 and 821 in the Pew Bibles before you. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us remain standing and join in our next hymn, number 712, Lord, whose love and humble service. You may be seated. Kids, come on up for our children's sermon. And we do have some jerseys here. That's awesome. Some faith. Oh, did you hear that? Pastor Joel said, go Bears. He must not know who's in the Super Bowl because the Bears weren't even close, were they? Oh, wow. Come on up and have a seat. I got a question for you guys. Did you guys hear a word in the, the gospel reading about transfigured? What's transfigured mean? Do you know? You don't know? Oh, now, okay. Have you and your friends ever sat around, I know you've probably done this, Sawyer, and made some weird faces? Have you done this where you take your teeth and you go like this and you draw your eyes and you look like this? 
You've done that? Okay, I just transfigured my face to something silly, didn't I? Well, in our gospel for today, Jesus was transfigured, not with a silly face, but he was walking with his friends up this mountain. He was walking with Peter, John, and James, and he was transfigured into, can you tell me what color this is? White. Have you seen white that's called dazzling light? It's so bright and white that you can't hardly ever think of anything whiter than that. And that's what Jesus was transfigured into, something bright, something dazzling, bright and white, right in front of his friends. And do you know why? It wasn't to make him laugh with a silly face. He was transfigured to that bright white so that his friends could see that he was truly God's son. No one was going to be as bright and dazzling and wonderful as he was. So that's the transfiguration of Jesus into a bright, dazzling figure But there's some other things that go along with it, so you gotta listen to the real sermon, okay? All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for being our loving Father and for providing your Son, Jesus Christ, to us and showing us through his transfiguration the beauty, the grace, and the love that you sent to us through him, your Son, the beloved one. Amen. All right, you guys want a favorite sucker? You better make sure you grab the right color so it matches your team's jersey, right? Did you get the right color? Ah, uh, he dropped it back in there. He's grabbing a red one now, so. So as uh, we celebrate this weekend of the transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel reading from Mark brings it to life, and, and I want to spend some time going through that, and so I'm actually going to go verse by verse, and I'm going to reread it because there's some, there's some very particular things that we have to understand about what God is telling us and what God is revealing to us through the scripture. So please have your Bibles out. We're going to be on page 820 and 821, and I'm going to reread the verses and then talk about some specifics in each of those areas relevant to our message today. But before we do that, would you join me in a word of prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, oh beautiful Lord, we just thank you for this wonderful day, the time to gather as friends, sisters and brothers in Christ, and just to be together in worship and fellowship. Lord, we just ask that you fill me, fill us with your word. Um, Please guide my words and guide our understandings of this message from the Gospel of Mark and help us to carry that with your Holy Spirit in our hearts each day of our life. It's for all of these things that I pray in your Son, Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. So we're going to start out in verse 2 in uh, chapter 9. It's on page 820, and I'm going to reread it. It starts out, Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. So I read those first two verses of our our gospel today, and I stop and I ask a couple of questions. Why Peter, why James, and why John, and what happened six days before this? So we actually have to read a little bit ahead of where we're at in Mark 9 and go back to Mark 8. And we find out in Mark 8, 31 um, through 9, 1, that Jesus has actually been um, with his disciples in Caesarea Philippi. And he's been explaining and telling them and foretelling what is coming with his death and his resurrection. And he's been doing that with his disciples and those that were, that were with him at that time. But that was six days ago. And now he takes three, Peter, John, and James. Why Peter, John, and James? We all have a group of friends, right? But do you have that core group of friends that you know that you can rely on, you can turn to, and that they're always going to be there for everything? That's what Jesus did. He took Peter, John, and James. That was his core of his disciple group. Those were the three that he knew he could rely on. And he went away. And why did he go away and up on a mountain? 
Because sometimes it's just better to get away from all the distractions, right? To turn life off, to get away from things because you need to refocus, you need to rethink about things, and you need to stop and see what's being revealed before you. And that's what he was doing. He was taking Peter, John, and James with himself away. Now, the dazzling white, I know many of you, probably more the women than the men, have bleached your family's clothes to try and get those stains out, right? Those whites that just won't get white. And here in Scripture, we find out that Jesus, his clothes became a dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. No matter how many times you try and bleach them to get them perfect white, Jesus' clothes were more white than anybody could get them on this earth. They were dazzling. And why did that have to happen? And why with Peter, James, and John? Let's go on. In verse 4, we read, And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Now, why Moses and why Elijah? Well, Moses here is a symbol, a symbol of the Old Testament law. Everything that, was, that, that the Jewish people knew and had studied in their faith, the Old Testament law, that's Moses. He's the symbol here that appears beside Jesus who is glowing in this dazzling white clothing. Now, why Elijah? Elijah, Elijah is the symbol of the prophetic promises. All those prophetic promises that we hear and we read about in the Old Testament that the Jewish followers knew and understood and the believers... Elijah is a symbol of the prophetic promises. Why Moses? Why why Elijah? Because Jesus, in his pure white clothes, in his purity, is being identified as God's son. And God's son is the completion and the fulfillment of the Old Testament law, the symbol of Moses. And he is the completion and the fulfillment of the prophecies, the Elijah, the promises that were given by those prophets. Do you see what was happening, what God was doing, and what God was revealing to John and James and Peter? They have been trying to understand what Jesus' mission and ministry was and what was happening, and they were still a little bit confused about it. So here you take the core group and you bring them out and you put them up on a mountain with Jesus and you glorify and you shine Jesus so bright in a dazzling white and you put the completion of the Old Testament and the completion of the prophets and the prophecies and those promises beside him and you show that Jesus Christ is my son. So let's continue. After Elijah and Moses had appeared, and we're in verse 5, then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And in verse 6, he says, he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been so shocked and surprised you didn't know what to do or what to say? That's Peter here. He's on a mountain with Jesus. He was walking with his friends, the the center core, and all of a sudden Jesus turns bright white, and then here's this figure of Elijah, and here's this figure of Moses showing up beside him, and, and Peter's trying to figure out what is all going on, and he's just shocked, and he's like, have you ever said something stupid when you didn't know what to say? That's Peter right here. Peter said, okay, uh, Jesus, we're going to build you a tent. We're going to build a tent for Moses. We're going to build a tent for Elijah. He didn't know what to say. He was so terrified. What do you say when Jesus is glowing before you in bright white and you've got the figure of Elijah and a figure of Moses coming and you're starting to see he said something really, really stupid. Let's go on in verse 7 because in verse 7 we see then a cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. So I'm going to repeat myself. Peter, John, and James went up the mountain with Jesus. Jesus turned bright, brilliant, dazzling white. 
then these two figures show up. God's revealing each one of these things, trying to show Peter, John, and James that this is truly his son. Peter says something stupid, like, here, we're going to build these tents, and he doesn't understand what's going on. So God just says, stop! Just stop! And comes in this cloud. Do you, can you just feel that energy and that and says, stop trying to think through and explain everything and just look at the simple signs I'm revealing to you. This is my son, the beloved one. Listen to him. And at that time, Elijah and Moses disappeared. Jesus is not white. The only thing that Peter, John, and James can focus on It's the beloved one, Jesus Christ. And God was revealing this in this transfiguration, in this this event, so that these core disciples truly could know and understand that this, this is God's son. He is our Messiah. And we will go to the ends of the earth to do what we can to help and guide his ministries. Do you see that? Do you feel that? This Wednesday, we begin our Lenten journey in 40 days, minus the Sundays. Pastor Joel reminds us that's how you get to the 40 days. Wednesday to Easter Sunday is 40 days minus the Sundays. We begin our journey of 40 days. And in that journey, we take time to pause and we are supposed to reflect and refocus and look to Jesus to see what Jesus is doing in our hearts. This past weekend, the council spent some time reevaluating our mission and our vision and our commitments. And it made me pause as I was sitting there listening to the conversations and discussions about what it is that's, that's guiding our church as a community. And, and you see it on the top of our bulletins. You'll, you'll find it on the, the front page that says, um, or maybe it's on the back page. Uh, our mission is united we live God's will. And that here at First St. Paul, we're going to love God, we're going to love one another, and we're going to make disciples. We will be a church where faith is found and faith is strengthened. And we have a list of commitments of things that, as Christians, if we are going to live in God's will, the, the, the truths of scriptures that God's calling us to do. And those, those are six different things from reading our Bible and scripture and studying it daily. Praying continuously, worshiping together weekly, serving in First St. Paul's and outside of the congregation, engaging in nurturing relationships, and giving generously in a servant heart. Through those six things, God's calling us as Christians, not just here at First St. Paul's, but in all places, to live in a unified way, in a unified love. And through this, this gospel of Mark, we find the transfigura- transfiguration of Jesus in a position that, that he's telling Peter, stop the busyness, stop the things that you think are running your lives, and take some time to focus in on the one thing that we need to focus on, and that's Jesus Christ. The beloved one, God's son. On Wednesday, when we step into those 40 days, minus Sundays, where are we? Where are you? Do we need to be a Peter? Do we need to stop? Stop the busyness, stop the rat race, and pause and refocus on the love, the joy, and the peace that God gave us in the grace of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Let us stand and continue in our worship with our next hymn, number 856, How Great Thou Art. Let us join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we receive the offering for today.
the end of each prayer petition, I will say, God of grace, I invite your response, receive our prayer. Let us pray. With gratitude for the gift of Christ, let us draw near to our Heavenly Father in prayer, asking His mercy for the church, for the world, and for all who need His loving kindness. Holy Father, thank You for showing us Jesus unmasked. Thank You for showing us what we will look like when we see him as he is. Even now, unmask us enough that other people see Jesus' forgiveness and love for them shining through us. God of grace. Let your son rule gloriously in the church through its words and deeds. Shed the light of Jesus' holy mercy on all who need him. Make the church your new Zion that many are drawn to the perfection of Christ's beauty and are saved, God of grace, receive our prayer. Give grace to this congregation that all who gather here in Jesus' name day by day see him more clearly, love him more dearly, and follow him more nearly, God of grace. We ask a special blessing on the little children not only on those dear to us, but upon all the children of the world. Shelter them from evil. Shine the light of your love upon them. Give them grace to hear Jesus' voice in our words and to see his dear face in our deeds. God of grace. Moses, the lawgiver, and Elijah, the prophet, bore witness to your son, the king of the nations. Grant their wisdom and righteousness to the leaders of the world. Through their decisions and actions, let them bear witness to their coming king. Help us and help them use authority in accordance with your will. Help them to lead their people into paths of justice and righteousness and peace. God of grace, receive our prayer. Shed the light of your salvation on all who sit in its shadows, in pain, in fear, in loneliness, despair, or sorrow. We recall those who have been or will be hospitalized soon, Dean Hawthorne, Vicki Frerichs, Florence Eichmann, the mother of Cindy Montague and Julie Mandalee. Let them see the light of your countenance and grant them your saving help, God of mercy. Let Jesus be the lamp to our feet and the light to our path. Help us to listen to him and to see him alone in every circumstance in life. In your good time, let us, with all whom Christ has redeemed, behold him face to face and let us worship him in the glory he shares with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever, God of grace. Receive our prayer. Graciously hear and generously answer our prayers and petitions, dear Father, as may be best for us and to your greater glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray as Christ has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. The closing hymn is hymn number 671.
Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.